You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wing 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. When we got that draw and we saw Southwood, we knew it was going to be a huge game. Uh, butterflies, I guess. I left the first snap. I'm ready to go. Trying to do what we're best at. Hopefully, um, we're making our kids comfortable. All right, so down. No need to be We've been the underdog all year long, so I think we can take this in, take it into the playoffs. Well, they've had a lot of success up there through the years. I think there's a lot of excitement at 1A. So we know what to expect. We just got to come out and do our job. Well, on paper, it was one of the best games, perhaps the best game in the entire state of Indiana in 1A. Of course, we know games aren't played on paper. They're played inside TV sets. Yes, the Highlight Zone ready to kick off sectional action. No 6A, no 5A tonight. And it's the smallest classification that gave us the biggest matchup. Andy McDonald joins us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Andy. Hey, thank you, Glenn. Tonight it was time to get down in Turtle Town. Cherubusco ranked 10th in the latest 1A state poll. Southwood coming in at number three. Southwood at Cherubusco. It's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. The Knights undefeated coming off their third straight TRC title. Busco 7-2. Highest scoring team in the NECC following an early block punt. Gage Kelly around the right side. Six zip Eagles. The Knights trying a little trickery. Gabe Lloyd half back pass. Sam Wood, though, playing both ways, gets the interception. Busco strikes quick after that. Jake Falk turns on the burner slightly faster than Oscar. The turtle rumbles more than 70 for the long touchdown. Busco jumps out to a 12 zip advantage. Next series, though, Falk would go down, and you hate to see it. Southwood completely takes the momentum after that injury. First up, it's Alex Barr up top. Jackson Simons looking like Randy Moss. The catch the score to get right back in this game. Then after a block punt for them, the Knights, Simon says, throw another one. Far again, agrees. They score twice in the final two minutes of action to take a 14-12 lead after half. Next half, Busco trying to keep him in it with his defense. Reese Wicker there for the big hit. But Lloyd will get him, close it out inside on the doorstep, gets in the end zone, 21-12. Southwood will close out 21 unanswered points against Busco as they move on. Southwood does 21-12 the final. When we blocked that punt, it was amazing. Our defense, I feel like, is like the fuel behind our offense. We play good on D, we play good on O. Because, you know, we've had teams in the past that are all offensive-minded, and this one's defense. And we power through on defense, and it just carries over in the O. It was the coaches. They really brought our spirits up, told us we have faced adversity all year. And we've hit little missteps and everything, but we just kept on fighting. Is the nose kind of a synopsis of this game? Absolutely. <laughs> it's pretty banged up. It was no problem. They're moving on. Southwood at Northfield next. Glenn, back to you. Oh, that should be a good county rivalry game. 2A sectional 35. Uh, actually, 1A action right here. We're talking about Kasten and Adams Central. Dallas Schwaller to Nick Neuenschwander for the touchdown in the second quarter. It's AC up 20 to nil. And guess what? Schwaller had himself a big night looking. He's got a different receiver this time. It's Brayson Yergler. That's a touchdown. It's 27 to 0. And Michael Mosier. Going for the jugular. Check this out. They decide to onside kick it, and I see nothing but red jerseys there. They get the football. They take advantage. Do the Jets. It's Schwaller to Dalton Gerber. And Adam Central rolls 48 to 8. They're going to host North Miami next week. How about this? 1A sectional 44 action. Rather, this is uh, South Adams against Tri-Central, 1-8, sectional 43. James Arnold to Drew Stutzman, 36-yard strike for the touchdown, and it's 7-0 South Adams out in front. And you know what? They had the foot on the gas, and they never took it off tonight. Arnold to Aiden Warner, the sophomore, streaking through the defense. It's a 38-yard score. It's 14-0. Later, you're going to see Arnold hook up with Stutzman again. i got to tell you, Drew Stutzman, a few years ago, he did an eight-hour job shadow here at Wayne TV. I taught him everything I knew, and he had seven hours and 59 minutes to soak it in. South Adams wins it 
49 to 7. They're going to host Monroe Central next Friday night. 2A sectional 35 after an up and down regular season. Bishop Lures looking to turn it on now that they're back in 2A. The Knights hosting Central Noble. Carson Clark with the touchdown there in the third quarter. It was 17 0. Now it's 24 0. Knights. Carson Clark, the sophomore, having a night. He finds Ramon Anderson and Ramon running around that big offensive line, creating holes. The receivers blocking downfield. And Razor Ramon is in for the touchdown. It's 31 zip. Lures. And the Knights starting to feel their oats. How about C.J. Hale up the gut for six. As Lures looking good, they beat Central Noble 45-0. It feels good. We played to our full potential today, and I plan to look forward to that in the next few games. It was great. They're a very good team. We just outworked them a little bit. We had a late start, but we just have to, later in the playoffs, get to a better start because when in the red zone like that, my wide receivers in line are making me look good. I mean, we just got to execute like that. So who is Lures going to get next week? NECC Small Division champ Eastside at Woodland. This one was scoreless at the half, but in the third quarter, Eastside starts to hit its stride. Laban Davis, a little pitch and catch with Wade Miller, and that is how Todd Mason wants it to be played. 7-0 Eastside in the third quarter. Late third, Eastside now doing it on defense. You're going to see the ball pop out, and it's Traven McKinley for Eastside. So the Blazers get good field position, and they take advantage. Laban Davis, the QB sneak. It's 14-0 Eastside in the lead. And that Eastside defense, they were bound and determined to pitch a shutout tonight, and they would. Lane Burns with the pick here. You're going to see him returning deep into Woodland territory. And it's Davis again for a touchdown as Eastside scores all 21 of their points in the second half to win this 21-0. Lures is at Eastside next week. How about some more 2A sectional 35 action? Bluffton 7-2 in the regular season. Tigers hosting a Fairfield team that already had four more wins than last year. Second quarter, Hayden earned it. Caden Gerber, it's a 15-yard gain. It's a first down. The Fairfield's already up 6-zip in the second quarter. Nern looking, finding. Robert Malcolm, Malcolm not in the middle, he's in the end zone, he streaks his way in, Bluffton takes a 7-6 lead, but that would be the only Tiger touchdown of the night. This Fairfield team's for real, guys. Colton Fisher coming up with the sack here, and Fairfield goes into Bluffton and wins it 27-7. Prairie Heights going to be at Fairfield next week in round two. Well, 2A and 1A are now in the books, but coming up after the break, we're going to hit the road for some long trips to cover some of the area's biggest schools, bigger schools, I should say. In 4A, it's East Noble looking to make a run to Lucas Oil Stadium. Their first stop would be at Northridge. We'll go there. And in 3A, Concordia making the trek to face a good 7-2 McConaughey team. Those games and trips to DeKalb, Leo, Southside, Jay County, Norwell Heritage, and more next in the zone. We're in the Concordia K9. We made the trip to McConaughey. And so did the Highlight Zone. Stay tuned for our highlights. Oh, yeah! We're in Snowball! We're at Northridge! And you're back in the zone! Woo! Hey, no doubt about it, East Noble fans have had plenty to cheer about this year. The Knights undefeated. One conference, and according to the Indiana Football Coaches Association poll, they enter the postseason ranked number one in the state in 4A. Luke Amstutz and company making the drive from Middlebury to face Northridge. We pick it up in the first quarter, and we pick it up with Justin Marcellus on the ground. Marcellus, his first name is Justin, but they should call him Winton because he is making sweet music like my man Winton Marcellus. 7-0 East Noble in the lead. Matter of fact, they would take a 14-zip lead. That's where we are here in the first. It's Lacey Cade for Northridge, getting Northridge on the board, cut it to a 14-7 East Noble lead, but you know what? East Noble's got potency in that offense, and it starts at the QB position. Bailey Parker, he can win you a game with his arm. He does it with the legs right there. 21-7 East Noble. Later in the second quarter, it's Parker. This time the arm to Hayden Jones, the senior connection, and East Noble wins it. 42-21, the Knights now 10-0. So who will East Noble face next week? We got 5-4 Columbia City at 7-2 DeKalb. First quarter, it's the Eagles striking first. Greg Bolt, the sophomore QB, to TJ Bedwell, and Bedwell 
will play well. It's a 21-yard touchdown. Columbia City stakes itself to an early six-zip lead. DeKalb answers. You thought they would. Tanner Jack, part of a big night. He had 26 carries, 105 yards, and three TDs. The game is tied at six. Second quarter. Who else but Jack? The budding stock car driver. Check out that story on Wayne.com. He revs the engine and gets into the end zone. DeKalb will score two fourth quarter TDs to pull him away in this one, 29 to 14. Next up, DeKalb at East Noble next Friday. Should be a good one. Other half of the 4A sectional 19 bracket, we got Angola at Leo. This actually a rematch of week two. Lions beat the Hornets by 20, but Angola much improved since then. Third quarter. That's Jackson Barber with the short touchdown, and Leo, who was trailing, now takes a 14-10 lead. Later in the third, the Lions D coming up with big play after big play. Gavin James bats down the pass on fourth down, so turnover on downs. Fourth quarter now, ensuing drive. Peyton Wall, 19 carries, a buck 72, and two touchdowns. That one gives Leo a 21-10 lead, and little Grayland is loving it. Fourth quarter, Angola scores to keep this interesting. Tucker Hasselman, he ran for 103 yards. But the Lions run out the clock. This was way closer than the game in week two. But Leo still does win 21 to 16. It's a team sport. Our team, uh, we fall. It's like when big play happens, our team starts rolling. So after Grayson LaRock with that huge run, actually, Mason Sheeran, that cutback, that 68 yard run turned us all around in the second half. Uh, that's really what sparked us. This is uh, playoff football in Indiana. It's, it's good stuff. Good stuff. And really proud of our kids for coming out in that second half. And, you know, and battling and playing physical. Doesn't get easier. Leo going to face Northwood next week. For a sectional 20, Huntington North and Southside squaring off at Jack Weicker Stadium. We picked this one up in the first quarter. Southside QB Roosevelt Northfleet the third to Trevor Hatner. He almost gets in. They rule him down at the one. And on the very next play, the Archers do get in. It's Northfleet the third. Running it in for the touchdown. That makes it a six zip south side lead. But in the second quarter, you're going to see Huntington North get on the board. It's Reed Johnson. Johnson up the middle and in as Huntington North puts up 37. Goes to south side. The Vikings a winner, 37 to 20. They're going to host Mississinawa next week. Mississinawa beat Delta today. Hey, other half of the 4A sectional 20 bracket, New Haven and Jane County Bulldogs getting hot at the run. They came in winning four of their last five, and well, it would show. This is Jamar Hutchins, and Jamar is making plays. Just watch this kid. It's like a video game, running down the sideline, breaking tackles, making moves. It's a 70-yard pickup. New Haven's offense inside the five, and DeAndre Wright. You know what? He's only a junior, but already a man amongst boys. Yeah, you don't want to tackle that dude. 7-0, New Haven in the lead. Jay County, the fighting Millspaws, trying to turn it on offensively. Quinn Faulkner with the first down here, but New Haven still up 7-0. Jay County wouldn't score on this drive. New Haven had the offense humming. Jakar Williams to Najee Fields. Lewis Williams had three touchdown passes as New Haven rolls 47-7. They're going to host Marion next week at John Young Stadium. Let's head to 3A. Good matchup in sectional 27. Concordia traveling to face 7-2 Maconaqua. First possession for Concordia. They move the football on the ground. This is Amir Drew. A 20-yard gain. First down Concordia. A picture-perfect start because later on the drive, Brandon Davis up high to Jalen Vanderbosch. It's a 35-yard pitch and catch in Concordia. Just a minute and a half into this game, already up 7-0. McConaughey, they can play, and this guy is a big part of it. Carter Little diving into the end zone. That knocks it at seven all, but it's Concordia who comes up with a big win on the road trip, 42-21 cadets advancing. Moving on, who's gonna face Concordia next week? Belmont and Norwell squaring off the courtyard for the right to do this, just that. First quarter action, Max Ringer. He's been doing it for a couple years now, three years to be exact for Norwell. He gets the touchdown. It's 7-0 Knights in the first quarter. Later in the first, that offense starting to hum. Eli Riley for Isaiah Breggy and Breggy down at the four. Norwell would finish it on this drive with another ringer touchdown. Norwell, we know they got defense and the offense looked good tonight as well. 49-0 over Belmont. Norwell's going to be at Concordia next Friday. 
Bottom half of the sectional 27 bracket, Heritage hosting Northwestern, and Northwestern looking to go to the air here. Jake Martin to Cole Cardwell. It looks like a touchdown, but you're going to see the flag come out. It would call this back, so take the points off the board. you got to love that if you're Nico Tagulis and the fighting Tagulai of Heritage. Later in the second quarter, it's Amarion Conyers with a touchdown run for Northwestern, but it's Northwestern's only TD of the game as Heritage comes back to win it 29-8. to The Patriots hit the road to face Peru next Friday night. Our final stop for football, 3A sectional 26. My man Steve Moriarty, Tippecanoe Valley at South Bend, Washington. Vikes looking for their seventh win of the season. This is going to help. Second quarter, no score. Dakota Gaff with the punch in. It's 7-0 Vikings. Now 7-6 later in the second quarter. It's Gaff doing it again. And Tippecanoe Valley is moving on. The Vikes win it 19-14 at South Bend, Washington. They're going to host Jimtown next, next week. We got your highlight zone. Jim of the night coming up. It is time for your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Week. We got to go out to Monroe for this one. Dallas Schwaller to Nick Neuenschwander. This combination actually making their second appearance on Gem of the Night this season. Beautiful touchdown and kind of Dwight Clarkie in the end zone right there. Touchdown for Adam Central. Adam Central moving on. They win it by 40. Looking good on that connection. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. On the ice, Thomas back home after a quick trip up to Kalamazoo on Wednesday. Kays with the first of two straight against the Jacksonville Icemen. First period, Mason Berg. He lights the lamp. It's his third of the season. The Comets up one zip, and there was more where that came from in the first period. Jason Binkley, you're going to see him rip one here. Anthony Petrozelli deflects it and in. Petro second of the year. It's two zip Kays. This one actually went to overtime, but Max Gottlieb for the Comets with that OT goal as the Comets win it 4-3. These two teams play again tomorrow night, 7-35. The puck will drop at the Coliseum. And yes, Dallas Schwaller to Nick Neuenschwander could have been, or was rather, your gem of the night. But I got to tell you, the MVP may have been Andy McDonald, who made the trip to Churubusco, brought back Magic Wand Burgers, Magic Burgers for everybody here at the Highlight Zone. We certainly appreciate that. And uh, congratulations on a good win in your game of the week. For Southwood. That'll do it for this week's edition. We'll see you back next Friday night.